today can potentially be a real event. When there is a fire emergency here, you are going to be busy. You would think that you're in the middle of the night. You're not. You're actually in the late afternoon. The fire is so intense, it's creating so much smoke that it's essentially blacked the sky out. Yesterday, during a red flag weather warning, which means extreme fire danger, a lightning strike started a wildfire in Markworth Forest to the south of Lake Margaret. The trail road from Lake Margaret to the north has been open. Air and ground fire crews have been containing the fire. This morning, the southeast newly winds freshen and the fire jumps fire lines and moves towards Lake Margaret. So anybody live up in Lake Margaret? Thank you guys for coming this morning. It's gonna be a gorgeous day, which is great for us and great for you if you won't get rained on. We have people who are part of the Medical Reserve Corps, and we have people that are part of the ham radio group, the Snowbar, Snow Valley Amateur Radio Club. And of course, our idea is that when there's an event, we are all going to be working together. So, we so when you're dealing with evacuation, you're dealing with the event. Just take it for granted that we do have a fuel model here that is conducive to a large fire event. If you have two hours of 80 degrees plus low humidity, you have the recipe for igniting a wildfire. Uh, you know, it's certainly about that you want them to stop, look at them, and if they're not looking at you, you need to go. I have an escape route, some place to leave, and the human eye picks up movement. If you st are stationary and you're standing there, there's a good chance somebody will miss you. But if you're moving a little bit, or your hand's moving, <clears throat> the human eye is designed to pick up movement. All right, and now I'm gonna let Jeff Madden from Our Firewise Introduce Linda. Okay, and she'd like to talk about a little bit of fire right now. And I want you to know what you can do so that you don't have to worry about your own home and property when you're out doing your best to save the lives of others. Three numbers to remember. The first is 30 feet. So 30 feet, the second is 10 feet, and the third is 5 feet. Remove fine fuels. You know those dead leaves, those little twigs that collect underneath the deck or next to the stairway? Keep those raked away. This is National Wildfire Week. That's why we're doing this, okay? Um, and actually, Linda and Jeff are going to be doing something while you guys are out being deployed. They're going to be up at Lake Margaret in that area, and they're going to be doing some of those evaluations for a couple of homes up there. The other thing that we want to make sure, especially with our ham radio guys, that when you're on the radios, Several times during the course of your communications, you want to be saying this is a drill. Out there, be safe. Enjoy what you're doing. Learn something. Important things. When you move from one location to another, communicate it before if you can, and if you have to be quickly, communicate it during or after so we know where you are. If you move, communicate. If you lose communication, return to your assigned station. So everybody knows they're going to meet with their person, get final instructions. You're going to check out with Jerry before you leave, pick up a map. The community is already on a stage one advisory, which means plan for evacuation. The Carnation Duval Citizen Corps volunteers have been requested by Fire District 45 to deploy SNOBAR, the CDMRC, and the CERT team members to help with communications, first aid, signage, traffic control, and shelter. So lots of jobs that we're going to be working on this morning. Hi. 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 I'm Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey. Jeff. Hey. Hey. Just trim back the bushes that are up against the house a little bit. Start walking around the house and we'll okay. start talking fire wise here. Okay. Uh, first thing I'll say is you got your fire the firewood nicely stashed away. Boy, it's a good looking shed too. The first 30 feet are are the is the is the critical zone. We just happen to have a highly flammable pine tree right here. <laughs> yeah. So if 
your tree catches fire, it puts out a lot of heat, and the heat alone can actually cause a structure to catch on fire. And then there really isn't likely that even if embers land here, they'll scorch it, but there's nothing here for them to, to, to burn. Plastic. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is if, if embers land here and this starts smoldering, could catch this, that. it could, it'll, yeah, at best it'll melt it. Okay. Um, you've got a natural little berry here anyway. Yeah, I just, I actually yeah. got that in the other day. That's perfect. So, it, I would say put gravel here okay. instead. Well, is inside, they tend to collect a lot of dead needles. Right. So... Oh yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can see. And then it's highly resinous. Mm. And so when they catch fire, they go Nice. Hot. Broadleaf evergreens, which are less flammable, mm -hmm. so they're a good choice next to the house. Two and three requested transports. We're checking ETA. I would put this one behind this message to drill. Because this is a message saying we need something, but now we don't need something. Center at capacity. Uh, employ your green patients as assistants. All shelters full, all staff engaged. Acknowledged. Are you getting cold? Okay, so we'll give you a blanket. Can you push out my hand? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a sprained or injured ankle, but it seems to be getting a little bit better. Sign. So it doesn't have life threatening injuries. We could put that is he's comfortable and he has improved. A bit, but he's also busy. So you run through shock and might throw up. Yeah. Specific number for Dan. How are communications working today? We're doing well. Uh, tried a few new things that have been very successful. Probably five locations. And uh, everybody can communicate, good signal conditions, and uh, they're passing lots of traffic. And the elbows are fire-wise, and we're supposed to be pulling traffic on the I believe we also are an emergency route, and we put signs and, out here. Uh, camp, a radio, and I think should take this road. Homes that want to get fire-wise, or they're all ready? They were just interested, so we just did a review like we've done. Of what they could. Um, I'm going to call on each one of our leads at some point and, and get some feedback from them. Yeah, number one is, is concise. My team ran the evacuation uh, shelter and these suggestions are in no particular order and we had a um, safety officer as part of uh, the evac shelter team one of the things that she noticed was we could have used more cones to help slow traffic down. Thank you for coming out here today. That was awesome. Having a number of people come out and what a great job you did. I can't thank you enough. We've discovered that having a door that locks itself can be bad. So <laughs> so when I asked if we're missing a person, that got to be like 20 minutes later, which is exactly right. Other, when I was receiving information about red patients, patient transportation, things like that, Prioritizing your traffic. So even though we had signs out and people who weren't actively managing traffic, on um, uh, scribing is putting both messages on one message. So in other words, what we would do is we would issue a message, or somebody would call in, that'd be message number one. But it might be, say Gerard's calling, it might be his message number three. Training identifies deficiencies in your experience level, your training level, and your equipment. But if you don't show up and you don't put your heart into it, the improvement doesn't happen. And what I saw today out of some people who don't have a lot of medical training, who are being coached by people who were trying to manage chaos, um, was, a, was a great effort and a lot of learning. Uh, I forget who I said. The last, the last September when I was here, I went back to the emergency managers here in the county and tried to And I took my pictures that I took. I said, this is the way we have to do it. So thank you for being here. Yeah. Sandwiches, um, we walked down the grocery for the water. Um, Safeway gave us the chips. Um, King County Office of Emergency Management gave us the flashlights and the utensils that everybody gets out there. And then also to um, the Citizen Court, we have some other giveaways to give you. 
Um, and also we want to make sure to, again, recognize the Duval Fire Department, Station 86, the Riverview School District. Um, we couldn't have done all this without them allowing us to use their facilities as well. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for